Welcome back into a momentous struggle. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Witches of Death Amir box and how I can build around them. Uh, there's not a full plethora of Death Amirians in the game, so we really can't go all into it. So I'm looking at what I can do and what we can play with them to kind of get the best results out of what, what they bring to the table. So let's take a look at what we're going to do and what our strike force is going to be for the Death Amirians. So as this is a new box, of course, we're going to be starting with somebody brand new to the game. And of course, that's going to be Mother Talzin. I like Mother Talzin as a, from a lore perspective. I think she's a very interesting character, but she's going to bring something unique to the game. It's a new tag that we, we've we seen with it, with Maul and with Asajj Ventress in Death of Marian, but we haven't really gotten the support pieces being the the secondaries and the supporting units to kind of build around that particular archetype. So, and now we're getting that. So let's take a look though at what she's going to end up be bringing to the game itself. So here's Mother Talzin. She's eight squad points. She brings three fourths to the table. Of course, a single unit, primary unit. She does have ten durability and three stamina. So not too bad, but a little on the weaker side for primaries, especially when you take a look at like Vader and, and people like that. So. Not the not the greatest, but not the worst either. Um, she brings a couple of different units or abilities to the game. Something that's kind of needed, um, and we'll see why looking at some of the other units. But something something that's needed, especially her active uh, or activated ability, being the obscuring shadows. Where at the start of the unit, she can choose another Dathomirian unit and move them, uh, at least dash them. Uh, so that's good i like that i like that she can help m give that out of activation movement um, basically you're going to prim really primarily be using those on your supporting and your secondaries um, depending on who you're bringing as your other or i'm sorry your supporting and your secondaries yep uh, depending on who you're going to be bringing as your uh, as your other primary because your other primary could be one of the dothamarians maybe not it just kind of depends uh she has a couple of interesting other abilities. I like manipulating hands. I think that's very interesting. It's very force hungry though, being at three points. So it is an active ability where you can choose an active uh, enemy unit, or you can choose an enemy unit within range four, and you can dash them, and you actually dash them whichever direction you want. I like that she could just manipulate somebody and move them wherever she wants to, and I, I think that's very flavorful for for Mother Talzin. But again, that's going to cost you two four. She's only bringing two to the table. So it really does depend on what other units you're going to be bringing and where you are in the game state, whether you're actually going to be using that ability or not. Her other ability that is really kind of great is that life drain, where after a Dathomirian character makes an attack, if they suffer damage, then that Dathomirian can heal. It is a reactive ability doesn't cost a force as long as she is not wounded or injured so that's the nice thing is that does give you a heal to your death uh, in the event that they deal damage in an attack which as we we're going to be able to see they're going to be trying to do it do some damage and deal out some attacks so definitely a nice ability it does show that you really want to kind of protect her and make sure that she's not getting those wounds so that you're able to use that ability for for free and not having to pay the force for it. So she is one of those characters that you're going to kind of want to keep back. But at the same time, there's you, you may want to try and be a little bit farther forward. Um, but, but most of her abilities, like I said, really kind of want to keep her towards the back third of the board uh, so that you're not putting her in a position where she's going to be taking those hits. You really want to kind of protect this unit here. Uh, just like with all of your... Well, not all of your primaries. I mean, like, for example, Vader just wants to run up and do things. But I think with her, you kind of want to keep her a little bit safer than you would with the other units. And, of course, her last ability, her last um, identity here is that Wrath of the Great Mother. Or when an enemy wounds another al or when an enemy wounds another allied unit, after that resolves, one of the characters in this unit may dash and make a five dice ranged attack. Um, and, of course, her, her range is four on all of her attacks so you again you're going to want to have her back so you can use this ability uh, but you want to keep her kind of like the at the edge of this range four um of most units you really don't want to put her 
in a position where she's going to be taking a lot of lot of damage and she's going to be your primary uh, unit that they're going to be focusing on because of her like i said her life drain um and everything along those lines and and kind of going back to her obscuring shadows one of the nice things about that ability is there it is not a range restriction on it so anyone on the board can do that they don't have to be within range three four five or anything like that so i i do like what she can do because she can move dothamarians around she can end up healing dothamarians and again that also does not have a range restriction on it either for her life drain so she has some really good abilities that don't have that restriction of range so i really do like what she's able to bring to the death of Marians in your strike force. So that's why you're going to be ring her to help support your death of Marians. But let's go ahead and take a look at the other units we're going to be bringing along with her. I have to say, I've been very excited about the next character that we're going to be bringing. I've been excited about him since he was spoiled from the very get go. Cause I, there's something about this character that I just absolutely love uh, from the, from the, his, time on the clone wars animated series savage Opress. i don't know if it's something just about how his brute strength and, and everything like that and what it is about him that i just really actually enjoy but i am super excited to bring, that we are bringing savage finally to this game so let's take a look at what he brings overall to the game though savage Opress is just a beater he is here to just throw dice so, what is it about good old Savage that I like? Well, he is a secondary unit. He does come with, cost four squad points. Ten durability, two stamina. He does have the Dothamarian Force user, Separatist Alliance, and Sith tags. Um, as of right now, for him, Dothamarian and Separatist Alliance are going to be the two things that, two tags that are most important for him. So, let's take a look at kind of his abilities and what how they're important first off is dark fury uh, which is an active ability pretty strong um, but it is costing a lot of force and that's where again is you're gonna have to decide what force you're going to use and that's come, something kind of a, a trend i've seen with these two death Marians that we've looked at so far that they have these these abilities that cost two force and they're they, uh, well they're powerful they are going to really tax your force pool, so you're really going to have to determine whether they are somebody, something that you're going to need to use. So basically this is you choose an enemy within two, roll five attack dice, and they suffer damage based off of that. Uh, so, that, But this is an active ability, so you can only do it during your active, and they suffer damage for each crit and hit that you roll. Um, if it's a force user, though, they also gain expose, which is really cool. Uh, so it is... It is nice that you can do damage and, and put an expose on a force user, but again, you, you need to make, make sure that you're not using too much of your force. So, well, Savage is very force hungry. Um, he also has Furious Rush. Each character in this unit may dash. If they're injured, they can go ahead and do a full advance. One, costing one force, um, but it does. But again, if you have Mother Talzin, you can help get him into range as well. And keep in mind, Savage is one of those characters that doesn't have a ranged attack. Um, so you definitely want to be able to try and get Savage into the fight because uh, he doesn't have his. Uh, because if he doesn't, if you don't, aren't able to move him up with Mother Talzin, you're spending some force to kind of get him into the positions that you want in order to make your attacks. Other than that, the only other stuff that he has is his innate abilities. Now, his innate abilities are pretty strong. Uh, he has his overpowering monster. Whenever he's attacking a primary character, he adds two dice. Pain is weakness. He has protection and steadfast, which are great abilities. Um, being able to reduce that damage by one from the in the damage pool and not being able to be easily pushed off of points makes him great, especially because you're going to be putting him into melee anyway, so you're really going to probably be putting him up on those center objectives most of the time because of his especially with that protection and steadfast so you, you're really it, it is really nice that you have those abilities the last ability being unwitting brute so when an allied separatist uh primary or a death of Marian primary starts their activation within range three of him he can go ahead and make a dash movement so you really want to have either Death Marion or Separatist around him to help get that additional activation um, and that additional movement around him. So 
but they do have to be within range three. So you really want to make sure that you are keeping, uh, for, this, for this point so far, Muller Talzin within range of him so that you are getting that free movement out of him. Because uh, you really want to take advantage of getting him as far up the board as possible and taking advantage of, of all of that. So I, I do really like a lot of his abilities. I think they are great. Um, with his attack, he's rolling seven dice. If you're going against a primary, he's rolling nine. Um, so you, you are going to be able to get most of the way down his tree in most cases. Um, granted, on his tree, most damage you're going to be putting out is going to be eight damage um but you do if you can get all the way to his last ability it gives you a, a free um a, te a free version of one of his active abilities which is probably going to be his dark fury as long as because you should be going up doing your attacks and then using that dark fury for fury for free um so you're hoping to get all the way down his tree um and of course going after like i said going after your primary units and force users um, are are going to be the best way to do it so that you're taking full advantage of everything that he offers on his kit. And let's round out this last squad that we have here. So, of course, we have Mother Talzin, we have Savage Opress. I think it only makes sense to go ahead and bring the Night Sister Acolytes with this with this particular squad let's just use the entire box and see how they play so this is going to be the first time i'm probably going to be putting them on the board when i play this particular strike force uh, so this is what i'm looking at wanting to to bring for th the squad is just bring the whole box so let's go ahead and take a look at what the night sisters are going to end up bringing to the game for us though overall as far as supporting units go the night sisters are they're pretty solid. They're not, you know, I mean, they're not the greatest. They're not the worst, uh, but they do end up bringing some pretty decent abilities. I do like acrobatic advance. Yes, it costs a force, but having that jump and gaining a hunker token off of using that, it, it's basically a defensive maneuver in a way, um, but it has the jump in it so that they're able to sit there and move into um, up onto elevation. So I like this ability, uh, this active ability that they have. I think it's we don't have a lot of jumps in there. I think it's on very much on in flavor for them uh, with with how they maneuver. Um, so the acrobatic advance I think is great. They do have coordinated fire, which of course offers my favorite condition in exposed, uh, basically. But this it's the same as we've seen on the clones, except for this one they have to be within range of another or when it's when another death of Marion uh, is targeting. So. And again, they have to be within range five, but range five is is a very fair distance. It's, it's, it's not very short. So I like the coordinated fire. I like the acrobatic advance. Uh, Darkness and shadows is their first innate ability. While they have one or more hunker tokens, they can add one dice to their de defensive rolls against range attacks. So basically this is just more defense at range. So basically that kind of tells me you really want to keep the Night Sisters back. You don't want them getting engaged in melee. You want them to take advantage of that full distance, uh, being at range and everything along those lines. And they don't have to be close. So their coordinated fire is just range five. So again, these are characters that you can kind of keep back. So it looks like, other than Savage, you're really going to be sending Savage forward and then keeping Mother Talzin and, and the Night Sisters kind of in the the back doing gunline type of things that you can do with them. Uh, their last innate ability is Night Hunter. When a character in this unit is going to make that ranged attack as part of their combat action, if the enemies are engaged with another Death of Marin, you add two dice to the dice roll. So again, this is something to help them get down their chart because they do have a full five on their tree, on their stance tree. Uh, so you definitely are going to need those additional dice to try and get all the way down there if you possibly can. Um, but and this is only on ranged attack. So again, you're, you're not really going to want to get in melee because you're really not taking advantage of their full kit if you're going to be putting them into melee range. Um, so that said, I mean, they do have six dice on their range versus five in melee. So if you're going to be doing melee a range attacks and, and they are engaged with a death of Marion, you're looking at a total of eight dice that you're going to be able to roll with them. Uh, on their tree overall best case scenario you're doing seven damage anyway so they're not heavy hitters 
Um, they do give an expose on the third third uh, instance down their tree. Um, they also do a pin on their first instance. So there's some good stuff in there. There is the option if you don't want to do the expose that you can do a heal on them. Uh, not sure how often that's going to come into play based off of the fact that you're really going to want to keep them towards the back. They're not going to be up front, so they're not going to be able to heal other people. Um, it, it does help to keep give them a little bit of survivability if they're going to be the ones getting attacked, but I don't know if that's really going to be the case. Only time will tell with that. But that is the Night Sister Acolytes. Let's take a look at the who I am going to take a look at bringing with them to start with. And here is where I think there is a lot of different options and different ways to go. Who is it that you're going to be bringing as the opposing sec support or primary unit to your Dathomirian squad? Do you go with another Dathomirian in Asajj or Maul? Do you go a different direction, maybe bringing a, someone else like, like Ahsoka or or Anakin to sit there and just have a beat stick. I, I done I I went back and forth many times and I got into a conversation with a friend of mine at my at my LGS, Chris. Chris had a very unique take on it and I wasn't quite sold on it. And then I slept on it some more and I really liked at the end of the day I really liked Chris's idea so i wanted to share that but i do want to give chris credit because chris is was the entire reason why this idea came to my mind and why i felt like it was the and really kind of sold me on this idea of this particular unit but i think it makes sense in a lot of other ways that I, i'm going to go ahead and share so i want to start by bringing darth vader jedi hunter in and see what vader can do with this team and there's there's a couple of reasons why, and I'm going to go ahead and jump into those here. So I think Vader makes sense in this unit for a couple of, or in the Strike Force, for a couple of different reasons. One, he's the most durable. 12 stamina, 3 durability. He's, he's going to be able to take a beating. Um, on top of that, he's either rolling 5 or 6 defense dice if it, without the added ability of having a, a, like a hunker token or any type of cover or anything like that so he's rolling enough dice to where in most cases the there's not a lot going through against him against primaries and or against secondaries and supporting units so you can definitely move him forward you can make him the the primary of that people are going to be focusing on because he's a very imposing character anyway. So you really kind of can put him forward, put him on a point, make him the center of attention, which is kind of what you want when you're bringing Mother Talzin and you're bringing the Night Sister Acolytes because you're wanting them to be back and shooting and not being taking damage because they, they don't have the durability and the staying power that Vader is going to have. So that's the what the a big reason why I'm wanting to bring him. He his his tags don't really bring anything to their the the tags that um, relate to the Death Amerians that you're bringing. There he doesn't synergize with any of them. It, but that what he brings to the table as far as a character is very important. The other reason I want to bring him is because of his identity, your hatred makes you more, makes you powerful. I think this is great to go along with Savage. Savage already has some survivability with his abilities to heal uh, and everything along those lines. So be, taking, putting the two damage on him because you're wanting him to be up there, you're wanting him to sit there and do some his melee attacks adding three dice so that he gets the full advantage of his tree, I think is going to be great. So I think that is overall kind of why I'm wanting to bring him because you can put him forward. You can, and I'm sorry, he doesn't have a heal, but you can take him forward. You, he does have the protection. So he's going to have that, that, and that's, and that steadfast. So he's going to be able to not take as much damage from enemy attacks. 
And, and again, you're wanting him to sit there and to get his full tree so that he takes advantage of that uh, Dark Fury ability. So there's like I said, there's there's a lot of there's some good synergy with Savage and Vader that I think is a good reason to bring Vader with Savage. So that is the the crux of why I want to bring Vader in this team, or at least why I want to try him out first um, with this particular strike force. So that's Vader. Who are we going to bring with Vader though? We've already decided that by taking Vader that trying to stay, play the synergy game isn't necessarily what we're trying to do here. So because of that, I am leaning more into just taking who I think is the best secondary in the game and just making basically what I think is the best squad in the game and just pairing them with the the box of the Witches of Dathomir. Basically, that's to me bringing Django Fett he's an amazing piece very he brings a lot to the game and again it he's going to do a lot of different things so this is we're going to go ahead and bring Django um the, the, the bounty hunter himself as part of this squad and let me give you a brief explanation as to why I want to bring Django and as, as I've said at this point in time I think everyone basically has accepted Django as one of the top two to three, if not the best, secondary unit in the game. He can just slot into any team he that you want. Yes, there's, if you are bringing a Separatist team, he, he gives a little bit more synergy there, but there's no reason to. None of his abilities require a particular tag in order to make him work. His jetpack is solid. Being able to jump and, and getting to higher elevations is just solid. Um, his My client is getting impatient where you can make a focus action and a jump. His, he has a lot of movement and helps you get to where he wants. And that my client is getting impatient is, is free. It's an it's a innate ability. Um, so you, you make the focus action, you get a free jump out of it. Just a lot of great things that he does there. His not-so-fast ability is just amazing being able to just sit there and get damage for one force by just and potentially ending an activation early all things that i think everybody knows about him and and that's really what it is is you, you're you want to put him up anyway so he's in the fight because you want him within range three to take advantage of that not so fast ability so he's another character going forward helping to make and taking the attention away from Mother Talzin and your Night Sister Acolytes who are going to be in the back doing their shooting thing. Uh, that's why I, I really, uh, another reason to bring him. But he's great. He's just a great overall character. He has that Force Refresh. Um, I, I'm, I'm just looking to get paid, which is probably going to be needed in some cases because their Savage can be pretty Force hungry um, and, and, you're, and everything along those lines. So I, I definitely think He's the way to go just because of how great of a unit he is and all the different wonderful things that he brings. That, Like I said, everyone's kind of beaten into the ground with with Django at this point in time. So let's round out our, our last team here and take a look at who's the last person we're going to bring is. I think the obvious choice to go with Vader here, uh, obvious to most people anyway, is going to be the Magna Guard. They're, they do a lot of the different things that we want them to do, uh, being teamed up with Vader, having that Vader, having some really good synergies with him. So I think that's who we're going to go with here is going to be Vader. Let's jump in and take a look at why we're looking at taking the Magna Guard, though. What's so good about them? The Magna Guard have a couple of really good things going for them. They are a melee-only unit, so they're going to take advantage of Vader's ability. They have 10 durability, meaning that they can take t some damage to get those extra dice to do what they need to do. But their ability is just the, the, the ha fact that they have two pushes to do some of the amazing things that they do are great. Their protection protocols to keep your primary units alive are also fantastic. They bodyguard well, giving cover one to all of your 
the the primary and secondary units are with, within two of, and they have intercede when someone if they're close enough and, and and if they're engaged is with another unit, they can just take the hit for your primaries. They help keep your primaries and your secondaries alive. Just great characters, and I think most people that have been playing this game for a little while know that they are just an amazing group of supporting units to take with you. So that's why we're bringing the Magna Guard with us. So let's go back and take a look at our strike force that we have to, to go for this particular uh, box and see what we can do. So wrapping it all up, here is the strike force. It's Mother Talzin with Savage and the Night Sisters, as well as Vader with Django and the Magna Guard. Pretty solid melee unit, um, but you do have some backline stuff going on with with Mother Talzin as well as the Night Sisters. Uh, Django just being a solid unit to just kind of he's a just the body the, the the all the different abilities that he has is really solid. So. I do like this team. I think it's going to be a fun one to put onto the battlefield and give a shot to. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for listening, and may the force be with you.